afternoon, greetings. My name is Jacqueline Carter, president, and we want to welcome you to the Bryant Carter High First Virtual Jazz and Comedy Team. This jazz and comedy team is presented to you for your enjoyment, which is one of the many missions. Others are supplying compassionate COVID baskets to those in isolation in the community. We also supply three of our community schools with monthly supplies to help them combat the post-COVID crisis in our school. And we partner with St. Luke's AME Church of Opelika to sponsor a free food drive for those in need, just to name a few. Now, I would like to set the stage for this event. Remember when you were a young girl or a boy playing with your sister and you had a tea party with your stuffed animals and friends, maybe your mom and your dad. What a wonderful time you had laughing, joking, dancing, etc. Get ready to relive this memory. I will step away and leave you in capable hands of our host, Elder Ernest Griggs, who is married to Lydia Griggs and pastor of the founder of the Solomon Porch Church of God by Faith in Lochapoca, Alabama. What up, y'all? Hey, man. <laughs> hey, boy, I'm so glad y'all are here. Hold on, 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 hold on. Hold on. Excuse me, y'all. What do you mean y'all don't have any? Y'all been out? Lord have mercy. Y'all, this Walmart, they say they still ain't got good sense. This is what's wrong with these folks now. They ain't nobody got good sense. And so Walmart's out, Kmart's out, Kroger's out, Piggly Wiggly out. So there's a lot of folk today. So your pastors, don't worry. Folk just ain't got good sense. So don't worry about that. But anyway, let, let's let's have our introduction and our prayer. And uh, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now, Lord, that you allowed us to come together here, Lord, and just bless one another and be a, a joyful, uh, a, a joyful uplifting to one another in the midst of all this sorrow, trouble, and and mayhem that's going on in the world. Bless us today, Lord, for your word says, Lord, laughter do it good like a medicine. And Lord, help us to have a good dose of it today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Oh yeah, and our scripture today, hey, y'all hey, see the pretty girl right here? My girl, I'm like the temptation. My girl, my girl, talking about my girl. Yes, this is my girl right here. Sister Linda Berea Andrews Griggs. Been mine this, this uh, next month. Uh, actually, June will be 45 years. She been my girl, been by my side. And boy, ups, downs, ends out, catatony, whatever you call it, she been with me. And uh, our scripture is from uh, the New Living Translation is from Psalms 126, verse 2, part 8. And it said, we were filled with laughter and we sang for joy. We were filled with laughter and we sang for joy. And you know, in a time like this, this is what we really need, a lot of laughter and a lot of joy because boy, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And you know, the, our joy actually pulls families together. Joy keeps things going, but I don't care how bad stuff is, boy. If you can get you a good dose of, hold on, I'm gonna get me a, a spot of tea. Mm, thank you, sorry about that. <laughs> I had to get me some joy to go on with this thing. Now, now listen, ain't nothing mixed, ain't no jack in this. <laughs> ain't no Chirac in this, ain't no Hennessy in this. Now you can see, but ain't no Hennessy in this, this, this straight out. T. All right. Oh, hold on. Let me pull me a little bit more. Yeah. Thank you, honey. Thank you, darling. Yeah. You want some too? Let me give you some. Lord have mercy. And you know, being a preacher, I tell you, Lord have mercy. Boy, it, uh, boy sometimes it, it, it's a hard job. It, it's rough. You no, know, you have to eat all these different places, you know, eat people food and they cook for you. And let me tell you, just before we, uh, I got a few minutes here, uh, they tell you what happened. Uh, I first got here to Auburn and we were telling people how much I like to eat and what all I like to eat, all kinds of food, wild foods and stuff like that. And, and I mentioned that I love chitlins. I know some of y'all are not a chitlin fan, all this. So I'm not offending you because if you don't eat chitlin, go eat your chicken. And all right, but but boy, so this lady said, Pastor, I can cook chitlins. I cook chitlins. I said, you do. I said, now look, when my wife come to come, 
Don't be offended because she don't eat chitlins. She was not raised on chitlins, but see, I was. I was chitlins, hog maw, pig feet, pig tail, look from the rooter to the tutor. Boy, we ate the whole nine yards of the hog, the pig, whatever came out of the yard. So, man, we down there eating chitlins, but the chitlins was so good. Lord have mercy. Jesus, who she had rice, she had pinto beans, all this stuff, man, to go with the chitlins. So the second and third, about the third time we were invited to her house, she cooked some chitlins, and we sit down there eating, and, uh, and I said, you know, everybody just don't know how to clean chitlins. Her response was, clean them? What you mean clean them? They be clean when you get them at the store. Lord have mercy, y'all, that chitlin swole up in my throat, in my, in my throat, in church, my throat. It throw swole up in my throat, and I was trying to keep it down and get it out at the same time, and but I lost all my appetite. So preachers have a hard time sometimes. Even these folk houses who don't clean, they chitlins, they cook them for folk, and folk be trying to eat with unclean chitlin. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Unclean chitlin. So boy, I that's bad, but hey, that, that's my story. And I tell you what, every the next time she called and asked her, we come to dinner, I found me something to do. If we remember, go out and read the yard till I was busy and couldn't make it. So hey, from that day to this one, it is now 2023, that was 1980. I have not eaten at her house ever again for no chitlins <laughs> or anything else. And if she brought something to the church to eat, if she bought something for, for potluck, I made sure who cooked that. <laughs> believe but we left that alone no i think i'm full baby i got enough right here we left that alone but anyway hey let, let's let's look look we have a commercial come up coming, coming up here and this commercial is uh about living because see our, our theme is to live to love and to laugh and boy we're gonna ask sister uh uh, let me see who it is. So the Kendra Reverend Kendra Jacobs is going to do a commercial here to bring us on and go to the next stage in this. Live, laugh, have a good time. Don't, don't trip out on us. Sister Kendra. Self-care is an important part of living. Some of the benefits are alleviating low back pain and improving range of motion increasing joint flexibility, lessening depression and anxiety, as well as reducing post-surgery adhesions and swelling. Divine Massage Therapy, 619 17th Street, Phoenix City, Alabama, 334-592-9687. All right. You need some good massage, good, good therapy. That's the place to go. Get your rub down, your pickup, your pickup, and all of this. Get it right there. But uh, can you imagine? You know, I, I, you know, I, I think kind of crazy sometimes. And, and I, th I thought about, you know, when Jesus was a child, some of the stuff Jesus did. You know what we did when we were children. And know Jesus being the divine, who he was, and everything. Uh, can you imagine Jesus supposed to be in there taking his bath? He in there walking on the water. Boom, walking on the way. My, boy, if you don't get in that bell, tell me, stop walking on that one. Get your bell. But that's Jesus. That, that, that was just him. That was just him, man. That walking on the water. And you know, so many teenage boys, you know how they, they, they don't want to take a bath sometimes. But Jesus the same way. He, he was human and divine. So he's in there, a bath water fix, he and I just walking. Just having a good time, but anyway, let's let's introduce our, our one of our comedians. And y'all, let me tell you, we got somebody. We got the R E D D. We got the red. We got the red, not the red dagger. We go to remember it's T. Not the red dagger, not the dagger, but we got the Otis Red Perry. And though he was a foreman of uh, a Bullock County Commission office for over twenty five years, boy, he put up folk with well, twenty five years. He put up with people. He's married to Gloria Crawford, Crawford Perry, and they have one son, Tyquan. And their daughter Lucretia. And when you read names like that, you know what you say? They black. They, they black. <laughs> they colored. They some of the you know what I'm talking about. And Taquan and Lucretia, uh, one special granddaughter, Zelia, I believe that's right. Well, anyway, this she is ready to spray me out. He lives in PC in Phoenix City. He attends the Hardaway AMA Church down in Union Springs. Uh, where Reverend Dr. Mary Hudson is the pastor. And he serves as the Pro Tem Stewart's trustee. A chairperson, son of Allen member, church school superintendent, sings in the Doug Choir. His hobbies include gardening. Hey, man, I want some greens. And I want some peas and some okra and some beans. And uh, I want some corn. And, and I want it cooked. I don't want to have to cook all that stuff. I want to pick and all that. I don't want to do the, I don't want to do the heavy work. See, no, I, I wanted to come and pick it up. I come pick it up. 
And, and then he, he, he had, mm -hmm. attended church programs and conferences, and uh, he was blessed with the talent of being a joke teller. And he takes great delight in seeing others smiling and laughing. He knows that God is blessing with this gift and he will continue to serve him by making others happy. And you know, it, it's good to be that type of person. Somebody that's always a lifter and not a loser. I wish I had somebody. He's a lifter. So hey, let's bring on the lifter, the red man. R -E and not a, not red bull either, the red man. Come on, red man. Uh, thank you, Reverend. Thank you. And want to say good evening to everybody and uh, hope everybody's doing well. And uh, it's just a joy to be here to make you laugh at this time. But y'all know something. I get tired of walking around looking at people, looking like they've been sucking on a lemon. Some of them look like they've been drinking vinegar. We need some <laughs> laughter in our life. Yes, sir. The Bible says that weeping may endure for a night, but joy no, comes in the morning. Mm -hmm. I want to let y'all know y'all moaning just got here. <laughs> <laughs> but this lady, this, this lady, this lady was in church one Sunday morning and the preacher was preaching and, and uh, she got happy. And she, she was on the back pew and, and she come out the back pew and started up the, the aisle and started to the front of the church and, and they had one of these big ceiling fans in this church. <laughs> And, and she had on one of them big wide dresses, and they had that ceiling fan on back of. And when she got up under that ceiling fan, that fan lift that dress up over her head, and the preacher was preaching, and he stopped preaching, and he said, "He that looketh shall be blindness." <laughs> one old man sitting in the corner over there put one hand over one eye and told him, well, I'm going to take a chance on losing one of them. This preacher, he was on his way to his church one Sunday morning and he was running late. And, and he was running 70 and a 55 mile by hour zone. Jesus. The state trooper throwed the light on him. And he looked back in his rear view mirror and said, now nah, I want to do he mean business. So he tapped it on up to 90. And when he got to 90, he looked in his rear view mirror, the preacher was right behind him with his light on. So he <laughs> tapped it on up to 110. He looked in his rear view mirror with the state trooper right behind him with the light on. Well, that car that you could have had run 140. See, he slowed it. When he got to 140, he looked back in the rear view mirror to stay true, but right behind him with the light on. He said, well, that's all I can do. He said, I'm going to have to pull over and say, whatever the consequences is, I'm going to have to take it. He pulled over to stay true, but walked up to the car. He said, let me see your driving license. He showed him his driving license. He said, you a preacher? He said, yes, sir. He said, you know something? He said, I've been a state trooper for 17 years. He said, I believe I done heard every story that could be told. He said, I believe I done heard every lie that could be told. He said, but I want to hear your story this morning. He said, I ain't never seen nobody do like you did. He said, I just want to hear your story. The preacher looked at him and told him, he said, six months ago, my wife ran off with a state trooper. <laughs> and I thought you were bringing her back. This <laughs> man, man, he had he hadn't been to church in a while, and he came to church that Sunday morning, sat down in the church, and. Preacher started off preaching and got about five minutes in his sermon. And he jumped up in church and said, that's cool. One of the brothers went over to him and said, look, brother. said, we don't use that kind of language in our church. <laughs> if our pastor says something you like, you say amen. I said, now you got that? He said, yes. Preacher preached on about five more minutes. He jumped up again. That's cool. <laughs> the other brother went over to him and said, look, brother. said, I know you heard what that brother told you. Said, we don't use that kind of language in our church. Say, if our pastor says something you like, you say amen. I said, now you got that? He said, yes. Preacher preached on about five more minutes. He jumped up again. That's cool. The preacher just stopped. He said, look, brother. 
say, I know you heard what them brothers told you. We don't use that kind of language in our church. He said, if I said something you like, you say amen. I said, now you got that? He said, yes, sir. He rested in his pocket and said, I said, I got a hundred dollars to put in the office. The pastor said, that's cool. The little boy he had turned 16 years old. The little boy he had turned 16 years old and um had got his driving license. He went to his dad and said, Dad, I'm ready for the car. The daddy said, No, son, so you can't get that car. He said, Before you get that car, it's three things that you got to do before you can get that car. He said, The first thing you got to do is pull your grades up. He said, The second thing you got to do is study your Bible. And she said, The third thing I want you to do. The little boy, the little boy went stay nine weeks, come back, brought his report card to his daddy, said, Dad, I'm ready for the car. So here's my report card. Daddy looked at it. He said, yeah. I said, you don't pull your grades up. And he said, I know you've been studying your Bible because I've seen you. He said, but son, you didn't cut your hair. He said, Dad, I've been thinking about this thing. He said, Moses had long hair. He said, Samson had long hair. And said, even Jesus said he had long hair. His daddy told him, yeah, but they walked everywhere they went. <laughs> <laughs> sure <did. laughs> That's cool. <laughs> oh, uh, these, oh, three, man. these three preachers were sitting at this restaurant and they all they had this had, had one thing in common. And the one thing they had in common, they had bats up in their ceiling. And they were sitting there discussing about how they got rid of them. And the first preacher said, well, you know, I tried to smoke them out. He said, but they left. He said, but as soon as they sit there down, they come back. He said, the second preacher said, well, I call a profession on it. He went up there and sprayed a chemical up there. He said, but as soon as they sit, they left. But as soon as the sit died down, they come back. The third preacher said, well, I got rid of them out of my ceiling. I said, you got rid of them. So said, how you got rid of them? He said, I got up early one Sunday morning. He said, I went up there and caught all of them and took all of them to church with me. Got all of them to join the church and baptized all of them and put all of them name on the road. And I ain't seen them since. <laughs> Y'all know how we do. <laughs> These three old men was out on the lake fishing. They was out there just a fishing, and they were just a fishing. And one of them looked in the front of them and looked, and some coming to walk in the water on water. <clears throat> One of them asked, said, Jesus, is that you? Jesus said, yeah. I said, that's me. They said, Jesus, come on and get in the boat with us. Jesus came and got in the boat with them. First old man went to rub his ear. He said, Jesus, you know I'm getting old and I can't hear that well. He said, you reckon you can help me with my hearing? Jesus put both hands up to his ear and rubbed him and pulled him down. He said, can you hear now? He said, yes. He said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus looked at the second man. The man said, Jesus, said, he started to rub his eyes. He said, Jesus, you know I'm getting old and I can't see that well. So you reckon you can help me with my sight? Jesus spit it in the lake, stuck both hands in the lake, wet them and put them up to the man's eyes and rubbed them. He said, can you see now? He said, yes. He said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus looked at the third man. He turned his back to Jesus. Jesus walked around in front of him. He looked at him. He told the man, throw both hands up. said, Jesus, don't you put your hand on me. Jesus said, why not? He said, because I'm drawing disability. I don't want to be healed because we're going to get that check cut off. You know what?
with y'all, Sister Demi. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, you know, y'all know back in the older time, and, and I know, you know, we got our little T in front of us, and I heard Reverend say he ain't got no, you know, he ain't, he ain't got none of that 90 proof in there. <laughs> But this preacher, this preacher, you know, he couldn't, he, you know, he just couldn't preach, you know, you know, you know, that was back in the older time. But this preacher, he, he used to get up every Sunday morning, he'll go to, he'll get, get service started and he just tell them, say, y'all sing a song and pray a prayer while I go outside and get some hair. Yeah, about five minutes, he'll come back in. Well, a few minutes after he get back in, he'll tell them, y'all sing a song and pray a prayer while I go outside and get some air. he go outside and come back. But one of the members said, why every Sunday morning he get up, come on, y'all sing a song and pray a prayer while he go outside and get some air. He said, I know what. So next time he go out there, so I'm going to follow him. <laughs> and then he got up, y'all sing a song and pray a prayer while I go outside and get some ass. <laughs> he got up and went outside and he had a brick in the church out there. He pulled the brick out and got a little ball out there. And he, you know, he, he got him a little hit. Got him a little hit and he put it back. <laughs> well, when he left, when he went back in the church, the man went, pulled the brick out and got his hit out of there. So he was in there a few minutes after that. He said, y'all sing a song and pray a prayer while I go outside and get some ass. <laughs> he went outside and he pulled his brick out. He didn't see nothing. He went to pulling on bricks and brick wouldn't come out. He just, and so he said, he went back in the church and said, y'all hold up. He said, don't y'all sing now another song and don't y'all pray now another prayer because somebody done stole my air. <laughs> uh, well, y'all, I'm, 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 I'm finna leave y'all with my last one, and, and this is one I like to use all the time, and uh, and I want everybody to think about it. But this man, he had two sons, and they stayed in trouble. Every time he looked around, they was in trouble. And he tried everything he could to keep him out of trouble, but he couldn't keep him out of trouble. So he was talking to a police officer one day, and the police officer told him, said, you get the baddest one and bring him down to the police station, and we'll talk to him. Man got his son that morning, carried him down to the police station. The police officer got him and carried him in that room and sat him down in that chair. And said, they asked him a question. said, young man, said, what God at? The young man, they said, would. They said, young man, we ask you a question. Say, where God at? The young man didn't say a word. He said, young man, said, we're going to ask you one more time now. Say, where God at? The young man didn't say a word. Police officer went back outside and told his daddy, said, he won't talk. And said, we don't talk. Say, we can't help him. The only thing I can tell you is take him on back home and I wish you good luck with him. The man <laughs> got his son and carried him back home and they pulled up in the driveway. The young man jumped out the car went in the house and found his other brother and said, man, we in big trouble. He said, what's that? He said, God is missing and they think we got something to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you all and hope y'all have a good program. I hope the program keeps you moving through. So thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> y'all. Red Fox is in the house. He don't show <laughs> Red Fox is in the house. He don't show slap out up in him. Up in him. <laughs> I don't know what was in that cup when it come out. <laughs> he had that air in that cup. He ain't fooling me. He had that air. Ain't that in that cup. <laughs> <laughs> See, you, y'all notice ain't nobody on the witness here that by himself. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Oh. <laughs> my, wife, my wife is here with me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Hey, y'all. I, I'm enjoying myself. And uh, before I introduce uh, a supervisor, C. Wright, uh, another true story. Here in Auburn, I'm pastoring my first year, and it's in the wintertime, and you know, it's cold, it's cold up here in Auburn, and, and we had this sister named Sister Clark. I can call her name, because she's dead and gone on the globe now. 
and all, and all her kids are dead too, I think. If they are, y'all see me be pulled out here, some of her kids came and got me. So Sister Clark came to church, and, uh, and you all that have been to our church know how our church is set up here. You know, you got the, the amen come on the left and the amen come on the right. If you're, if you're standing in the pulpit, the women on the left, the men on the right. And uh, so I'm standing up and getting ready to preach. Well, actually, I'm sitting down there looking back over my message, getting ready to get up to preach. Everybody's singing there doing what we call testimony service. And uh, Sister Clark comes in late, and uh, she has on this crocheted poncho. So she's an elderly lady. She comes in, sits right there on the front row there on the left-hand side in the amen corner. And, it, and the church got a little warm. So she reaches up and pull her poncho off. And when she pulls it off, Lord have mercy, she had her wig on. And the hairpins got caught in the, in the poncho. So when she pulled it off and, and, and laid her poncho down, the wig was laid down with her. Her hair, y'all know how buck with them hair was, like that. Her hair was all kind of ways like that. And I'm looking at trying to preach, and, and, and that hair going 90 different ways from northwest, east, south, and Lord have mercy. And then when she realized, and she still up there just sang with everybody else, and they hair going like that. And I'm sitting up there in the pulpit saying, my God Almighty. Hey, I, I was not like Pastor Edward, to God be the glory. I was saying, my God, what is this glory? And man, I looked up there and, and, and the, the folk was singing. Everybody stopped singing. And everybody's going to me, what has happened to her head? So when she realized that a wig was off and was laying down there on the pew, with her, with her poncho, she grabbed it and trying to, and, and she trying to shake it and loose and look like a badger, a wolverine with that it called a gray and black, look just like a wolverine. And she fighting and wrestling with this thing. And when she finally got it loose, which looked like an eternity, and put it back on the head, she had it on snap back. Lord, church, <laughs> was, church was over. It was not. It, it was. It was no. Let, let me tell you, country. It was over. With. It was not over with. It was over. With. I got up and I said, "Y'all, let us stand." We gonna pray. We going home. <laughs> it wasn't no preaching that day. It was no preaching, no more singing. We just prayed, got the offering, and we went home. And she told me, "Say, Pastor, say, well, I guess I was the sermon today." I said, "You sure was. The, you sure was the sermon. Take it off <laughs> and keep putting it back on right with the message." And she was the message in action that day. So y'all, hey, funny thing happened at church stuff. You can't make this stuff up. If y'all had been there, see that see her wrestling with that thing, and they got it on her head back when she got it back on. What honey it was a mess. Ooh, she, it was a mess. But anyway, let us let us before we do this commercial, let's introduce uh, uh this this great sister. My God, I'm out of boy. I, I read all her accolades, and I can't read all of it. She's done so much and still doing. She's doing stuff that some folks, you know, you already got some folks that ain't gonna do. She's not in the ain't no. She she's not in the ain't gonna do crowd. Uh, reading this stuff, and this is what I come up with, and I hope it works. If it don't, it, it's just me. Uh, I say she's a member of the Sis Club. S I S. You hear me? She's a member of the Sis Club. That means she's a she is somebody. S I S. She is somebody because see, you you don't you don't walk up in Ohio State University and uh, and graduate summa cum laude from Benedict College. I walk up in Howard University or Georgetown unless you're somebody. This sister is somebody. But, but let me tell you what happened to her. See, she was moonlight, but she met Harry and became C. Wright. She couldn't see right in the moonlight till she met Harry. Bishop Harry C. Wright is her husband. And, and let me tell you, out of all the things that she does, her real pride and joy is this right here. Her daughter, Sheree Nicole C. Wright. Her son, Harry Matthew C. Wright. Her granddaughter, Cameron, uh, 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 she's the grandmother of Cameron Isaiah C. Wright. And she the lover and the lover he lied of Bishop C. Wright. That's the man that make her tea pop. <laughs> her <delates. laughs> she's, a good, she's a supervisor and all them good stuff there. But see, when she leave all that and go home, boy, she hit love his life. She likes up stuff. And that's who she is. All these other things are great. But when she just her, without that, because those are add-ons. See, Bishop didn't know he, you know, the add Look, the scripture did say, he that finds a wife found a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Look at all that favor he got. Well, he's pastoring all this. He got the, it's from her. She's the reason for the season. So then let's let our uh, Reverend Cynthia Johnson, CJ, Reverend Cynth, come on with her commercial. Oh. 
love. Love is what love does. Love is sweet. Love is kind. Love is always genuine. Love is almost like having a sweet glass of tea. <laughs> the sweet taste of love. <laughs> Amen. The sweet taste of come on, sister C right. Look at her. Look at it, baby. <laughs> good evening. Good afternoon, everybody. Hope everybody's <laughs> doing well. I'm telling you, uh this MC and brother Otis Perry, he told me, I asked why I had to go why he had to go first and he told me why but I ain't gonna tell y'all why he told me <laughs> an answer that only Red could give me so I'm gonna leave that alone but uh, <laughs> listen to everybody here to the Missionary Society thank you so much for inviting me to share in this I just got a few little things I like to say and you know I hope you laugh if you don't you'll be all right okay <laughs> <laughs> but um you know I, I, I like to talk about the Bible a lot uh, about the Bible a lot because the Bible is um you know, it's, it's cool. It's got a lot of good stuff in it. Mm -hmm. you know, it's cool. uh, what did the people say when the man uh, needed a boat built? They said, I know a guy. Yeah, I know a guy. Gotcha. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> but what did Daniel tell a real estate agent? I'm looking for a house, but I don't want no den. <laughs> 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 what little girl say when a classmate asks you why you always walk by the same little girl every day she said well the pastor told me I'm supposed to walk by faith <laughs> what did Jonah's family say when he told them what happened on the way to Nineveh he told them that story you know what they said they said that sounds kind of fishy to us <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> what, can, what, what is the one food you can eat that can bring you misery for years on end? Wedding cake. <laughs> what kind of wood did Noah use to build the art? Two by twos. Two by two. <laughs> okay. Like that, like that. <laughs> right. What do you call a pig that does karate? Pork chop. Why shouldn't you write with a broken pen? Because it's pointless. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I love why, it, did, love why did they get a scarecrow an award? Because he was outstanding in his field. Not who not who there figs. It's you. Fix the doorbell and I want the knock. Doorbell and I want the knock. Knock knock. Who there? A little old lady. A little old lady who? Lady who? I didn't know y'all could yodel. <laughs> <laughs> little lady. Little lady. <laughs> Black folk yodeling too, little lady. <laughs> Did y'all see the movie Constipation? Oh, Lord. It hasn't come out yet. It ain't come out yet. <laughs> it ain't come out yet. <laughs> 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 Yeah, I saw coming soon. Coming soon. Yeah. <laughs> Throwing <Dorian Castor> on. <laughs> and several black drops. <laughs> this man was he was in the hospital at Benham. He was he was dying. And the doctor said, you look at ain't nothing else we can do, and you just need to get your affairs in order. So his wife was there with him and they called the children. And they were standing by the bed. 
and they asked the dad said, I just got a few things I want to say. He said, um, to you, my first son, I want to give you all that I had on Fourth Street. <laughs> uh, yeah. He looked at his daughter, he said, and I'm gonna give you everything I had on Lavender Avenue. <laughs> Shook her head. And to the little boy, he said, I'm gonna leave you everything that I have on Clover Lane. And the nurse was standing there, she just got so filled up. She said, oh my goodness, I just can't believe you leaving all this real estate here for these children. He said, his wife said, real estate? He ain't got no real estate, that's his paper route. <laughs> well, the pastor was going to his office one day, got to the church, he saw a dead mule in the yard. So we called the police. The police said, no, it wasn't a foul place, so you need to call the health department. We called the health department. They said, it wasn't a health hazard, so you need to call the sanitation department. The sanitation department said, well, they couldn't pick up the mule without the mayor's approval. And that just really made the pastor mad because he knew that the mayor was just a nasty old man and didn't like him. But he said, I got to call him anyway because I get this mule out of this yard. And so when he called the mayor, the mayor said, what you call me for? Isn't it your job to, to bury the dead? He said, Mayor, you know you the truth. It is my job to marry the, bury the dead, but I always have to check with the first of kin. There is nothing on this earth like the black church. We do things that it pretty much don't make sense, but we do them anyway. We tell people, stand on your feet. What else are they going to stand on? <laughs> <laughs> we do it. Blind and could not see. Well, that kind of goes with the territory. <laughs> <laughs> Lame and could not walk. No. Yeah, yeah that, that's pretty much it. <laughs> and we just sing, we just sing anything. I'm going to trust in the Lord till I die. Mm. I'm gonna treat everybody right. No, you lying because you ain't speaking to the person standing next to you. I'm gonna treat everybody right. I, 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 I just sum that part. I don't even sing that no more. I just go with it. <laughs> this is a true story. At my home church one Sunday, the pastor said, when I was going up Baptist, he said, uh, it's time for the offering. Ask the deacon to bring the money, bring the um. The plates uh -huh. out, so they bring the table out, so people bring their money. And the choir actually sang, I done gave all I had to the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> That's a true story. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> well, when you, when you go to church, you know, and we all have family and stuff, and we realize that sometimes families don't get along, but that's nothing new because, you know, God had problems with his children straight off the bat. Adam and Eve, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> then Cain and Abel, mm -hmm. Esau and Jacob, you know? Mm -hmm. And, yeah. uh, you know, that, 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 and Jesus had a strange way of saying stuff. They said, Jesus, your brothers and sisters here. He said, who is my brother and sister? <laughs> now, you know, Jesus didn't even know his people, he had to ask. <laughs> <laughs> but Jesus had real family problems that dogged him till the day he died. You know how I know? Because on the cross, Jesus said, Mother, behold your son. Son, behold our mother. Now, Jesus had brothers and sisters. But he was talking to John. You know why? Because he knew his brothers and sisters hadn't done nothing in the past. <laughs> they weren't going to do nothing in the future. And he was not going to leave his mama in that way. So we just found him somebody. That, that, there's a lesson in that, you know, you need to know your people and know what they're doing. Jesus said, we're going to do right in the first place. Oh, <laughs> my Lord. Where is Solomon's temple? Located 
Mm-mm. Mm-mm. On the side of his head. <laughs> when i accepted this invitation i'm getting ready to get up out of here and i accepted this invitation i think it was just a car but somebody called me and asked how much was i gonna charge <laughs> so i told her i said well you know I, I try to church, trust church folks to do right. <laughs> <laughs> but I was invited to this church to preach. I was invited to this church to preach, and it was the same day that the singer Aaliyah died in a, in a, in that plane crash. And I got there, I had a hard time finding the church. They didn't have a sign out front. That that should have let me know something was wrong. Mm-hmm. I got there, and nobody was there but me. And finally, the people start filing in. And, Pastor came in and he sat in his office and it was daylight saving time, but the clock was broke. So <laughs> that was another, another indication that things were not going to be right. But, you know, they invited me to preach, so I'm going to come preach anyway. Well, I got there and they finally went out. The pastor's wife went out and started leading the praise and worship and the people weren't singing. And she said, oh, y'all just done left all your praise and worship over there at the buffet. So, but y'all got to praise the Lord. So she finally got them to stand up and they start praising the Lord. Well, got ready to preach. They had the choir to come in. This lady with the youth choir came in. She was the directress and she came in and she took her hand and stood up and put her hands up to the record. And she said, I looked on her fingernails and just, just the, so the choir sang. <laughs> I got to preach. And you know, the little baby started crying. So a lady, instead of walking the baby across the back of the church, she walked the baby up and down the aisle toward me. I'm like, this, this thing just can't get too much worse than this. Oh, well, I finished preaching and they called for the offering. <laughs> they called for the offering and they choir sang this beautiful song. They finished, they counted the offering, they counted right there in the front, and the pastor looked up and said, uh, oh, this ain't good. This, this ain't good. <laughs> it really ain't good. The offering was $38. <laughs> and I had put in 20. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And the church was over, went back in the pastor's office, and he said, oh, Reverend, here's the money. Uh, for you preaching. He gave me the $38. And I said, sir, you know, I, I'm, y'all, y'all just keep it. You know, I couldn't take my $20 back. <laughs> <laughs> y'all just keep it. So he said, oh, oh, we had a good time in the name of the Lord. We're going to have to invite you back. So, so I was walking out. He said, well, ma'am, we're going to have to give you something. That pastor literally ran out the church behind me. We got to give you something. He gave me a 20-ounce Pepsi and four Ooh. chocolate chip cookies, and two of them were broke. <laughs> <laughs> so I told him, as long as you don't give me a 20 ounce Pepsi and two broke, and four chocolate chip cookies with two of them broke, I think I'll accept whatever you have. So I didn't want to tell him no. Two broke. I, too broke. I mean, they weren't even together. I, and I love it. Wasn't even, wasn't even there. So anyway, uh, that's just kind of the way it goes. And life is good. And when you know that things are going good, you have to realize who you are and who you belong to. Mm-hmm. There was a turtle that was on this farm. He kept climbing up this tree. He would climb up there and he got up on the limb. And he jumped and tried to flap his legs and he fell flat to the ground. <laughs> well, it took him, he was a turtle. It took him so long to get up there. So the next day, he tried it again. Got up there, jumped off, flapped his legs and fell flat to the ground. The one that didn't kill him. Well, the next day, I declare if he didn't do the same thing. Got up there, climbed, found it to the top, jumped off. And you know what? He hit the ground again. Splat, just splat, turtle splattered everywhere. And the bird looked at the woman bird, looked at female bird, looked at the male bird and said, 
I think we should have told him he was adopted. (laughs) 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 Whatever you do, you need to know who you are and who you are. We can count on the fact that we belong to the body of Christ. We have been adopted into the family of God, and we're going to be all right. Even with Red Perry going around, we're going to be all right. Because God <laughs> right. in charge, him in charge of this world. And for that, we can say thank you, hallelujah, thank you, and amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> My good. Can y'all enjoy that? Amen. I, I told y'all she couldn't see right till she married C right. She was in moon like that. She couldn't see right. And right. she been seeing right, but she been doing right, boy. Let me tell you. And you know, and she brought up about the black church. You know, we we something else. We ain't gonna not not today. I'm sure we started on time. It must be some white folk in the congregation. Because you know, most black folk ain't going to start on time. And you know, even, even in our singing, even in our singing, we don't, we don't really mean on time. Because you know what we sing? I'm coming along. No, you're supposed to be there. I'm coming along. And then when we get to singing that, don't call the road till I get there. No, well, then when the white folks say, when the road is called up yonder, I'll be there. No, no, we ain't going to be there. We gonna be, that's why, and, 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 and you know what? They, they, have, they recently changed. It used to be on the funeral, the late brother. <laughs> the late sister. Because we yeah, ain't going to email the undertaker. We ain't going to, Harris and Peterson, we ain't going to to come in. We still at the hospital later. <laughs> <laughs> but they got the weight, so we didn't. They, 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 they then the guy's called a secret, a, a obsequious, a, what do you call it? I pronounce that services. Mm-hmm. And then, then they called it home going. But even in that, I'm coming, Lord. Don't call the road till I get there. And that's why white folks, when they, when they die today, they bury them that evening. Because they say, when the road is called a gun, I'll be there. Us, we still wait two more months for Johnny Bear to come from Germany, or excuse me, to come from Camp Hill, because she, she got to wait till her check come and get the mule to come to poker to get the, the bury. And then they gonna argue about the ship room. That black folk for you. That's us. That's us. You, you, you can be a red black folk, but you. That's us. <laughs> Y'all know that's us. Arguing about a, a, a fault that grandma forty gave you. And ain't in no will no how to oh, no, guess I know that. Well, let me tell you, let, let me bring on, let me let me bring on Jesus have mercy. Let's bring on uh uh uh, uh sister Monique Summers. I call her Momo. We're gonna bring on Momo to give us some more. See the Reverend Monique Snow Summer. She ain't this a we went with from the moonlight. To the sea, right? Yeah. To the snow. And it's up. He snow summers. Now, you know she messed up. She got two seasons <laughs> with her at the same time snow and summer. And you know, it's gonna be snowing in no summertime. It's gonna bring some more. So, so, Monique Summer, she's a servant pastor, a teacher, an exhortor, and a controversial who, who has a profound love for God and the kingdom of God. Now, now C. Wright thought was right, Bishop Harry L. C. Wright thought was right to appoint her to the historic St. Luke Hill Church of Opelika, where she serves as the first female pastor. You know why? Because she got two seasons in her. Because see, if you get if you want to get rowdy, if you want to do it straight, <laughs> summer, winter, spring, summer, fall. <laughs> Don't throw them hands because she might make you fall. Remember, some of us remember the AME Church women, women Ministry. Currently, uh, Sister Summer serves as the third vice president of the of the WIM uh, for the ninth Episcopal. District. You know, when I was a child, I wonder why they call it Piscopal. If you said that other Piscopal, you know, but that's the couple, they equip you. But they call it the Piscopal District, as well as acting coordinator for the NEAC Women Ministry. And Pastor Monique is a former, she's a po- oh Lord, I'm messing with the Popo. Jesus, help me, Lord. I, I didn't mean to do it. I didn't mean to say it. I, I, I confess. She's a former police officer and project coach 
and the president employed at the Lee County uh, Youth Development Center and as a lead teacher of, uh, over the, of the alternative school. Reverend Summers is also the founder of, Mo, of the Minister Monique Summers Ministry, aka Monique Summers Ministry. On March the 31st of this year, Pastor Summers celebrated 22 years of woo, woo, woo. Let, let me do this for you. Forever. That's how long you'll be in love with him forever. Yeah, 22 years. And, and you know, you, and, and with the way 22 years, you can read it forward or backward, even, even be dyslexic, you still get 22 right. The years of marriage with the love of her life, Mr. Perry Shelton Summers. Uh, to God, let me be like Pastor Elvis, to God be the glory. Great things he has done. And, and boy, boy, you got your good as she was stuck with you for 22 years. Come on, Sister Summer, and do your stuff with both of them seasons in you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Truly, uh, we have been blessed on today with this jazz and comedy virtual tea. Uh, we have been filled with laughter and joy. And so we give God praise. Special thanks to the guest comedians, um, our supervisor, WMS supervisor for the 9th Episcopal District, uh, the Reverend Sharita Moon Sirai and Brother Otis Red Perry from Hardaway AME Church. We thank God for the comedians, but we also give God praise for Elder Ernest L. Briggs for being the host of this great event. And so at this time, I have been tasked with just um, to uh, thank everyone for coming on. And also there were several sponsors who helped to make this event a success. And so we want to recognize those sponsors at this time because of what they gave and what they have done. So a special shout out and thanks to the following sponsors and they will be displayed on the screen. Uh, first one, uh, we'll ask the media tech to bring that up is uh, Sister Arlene Duckett from Texas. Um, mm -hmm. She uh, gave and helped to sponsor this event. And so we thank God for her. Also, we have additional sponsors from Oliver and Company, James Luther Pollard, um, he is one of the sponsors for this event that he, he works for Oliver and Company, which is located there on Frederick Road, Suite 308 in Opelika, Alabama. So if you need your hair serviced and, and done, please consider James Luther Pollard. We also thank uh, other sponsors, the l, &L Hauling and Backhole LLC. Uh, located at 2700 Ridge Road, Opelika, Alabama, 36804. If you have a need for hauling and backhoe services, please consider um, contacting l, l Hauling. Their number is displayed 334-744-1436. Other sponsors include um, the Family Food Smoke Barbecue. Located at 145 Lyson Road in Notasolga, Alabama. Uh, it's a family food barbecue, uh, Boston butts, ribs, chickens. Um, you see the flyer there displayed. For all of your barbecue needs, please consider the family food smoked barbecue restaurant. <clears throat> we also would like to thank Peterson and Williams Funeral Home, which is also located in Opelika, Alabama, right there on McCoy Street and their phone number 334-745-9473. We thank um, Ms. Bertie Peterson and family um, for their sponsorship. Additionally, we also would like to thank l, l Hauling, which is located in Auburn, Alabama. Their motto, we haul it all. l, &L Hauling is a carrier uh, company in Auburn, Alabama and it is owner operated. And so those are our sponsors for this event. The commercials that were provided to us was by the Reverend Kendra Jacobs and the Reverend Cynthia Johnson. We ask that uh, if you have a need for a massage therapy, <laughs> consider divine massage therapy uh, services offered by the Reverend Kendra Jacob. And Reverend Cynthia Johnson is an entrepreneur as well uh, divine uh, Essentials by Cynthia. 
And so we would hope that you would patronize those um, commercial, those persons who sponsored ads to do the commercials for this comedy mm -hmm. and jazz tea. At this time, also, I would like to pause and um, give thanks to the president um, of the local missionary society there at Lee Chapel. Would like to thank um, President Jackie Carter and her members there for the work that they have done and the chairperson, Sister Ethel Cobb, uh, did an awesome job with this event on today. Now at this time, I know that everyone purchased tickets in order uh, to uh, be a part of this jazz and comedy tea. But um, there is an opportunity if you would like to sow into the ministry here at Lee Chapel. You can do it in one of three ways um, by Givelify to Lee Chapel AME Church, 521 Temple Street, Auburn, Alabama. You may also do so by way of Cash App to Lee Chapel. That's dollar sign Lee, L E E, Chapel, C H A P E L A M E, or by mail to Lee Chapel AME Church, mail. You're offering to 521 Temple Street, Auburn, Alabama, 36830. By doing so, you help the missionary society there uh, to effectively do ministry. I believe when President Jackie Carter came on, she mentioned the mission work that goes on there at, at Lee Chapel and what they do. Uh, from giving out food on a monthly basis to visiting the schools. During the COVID, they did all kind of... Um, packed items that they brought out to the needy, went into nursing homes. Every year with the YPD, they do a back to school bash. So when you give today, these funds will go into the Carter, Bryant Carter High Missionary Society, which will help them to continue to do effective ministry there at Lee Chapel. Now at this time, we do recognize that we have other guests that are are on with us. We have the president of the Ninth Episcopal District, WMS, uh, Susie Bonner, and our own um, presiding elder, Reverend uh, Dr. Letitia Watford. We'd like to yield at this time to allow President Bonner and presiding elder Watford the opportunity to greet us. Well, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Laughter is indeed good for the soul. I've had a blast today. And thank you, uh, Sister Carter, for your creativity. And I just pray that God will continue to bless the ministry. Good afternoon, everyone. I am not prepared to be on camera but I too have enjoyed myself. This is presiding Elder Watford. I wanna thank you for inviting me to this tea. And I want to thank you for giving me a good laugh today. Every one of your guest comedians were absolutely hilarious. And we just appreciate this opportunity to share in this jazz and comedy tea. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Presiding Elder Watford and President Bonner. Uh, before we turn it over into the hands of the pastor of Lee Chapel AME Church, um, our supervisor, who was uh, the comedian, one of the comedians, we uh, yield the floor at this time to hear if she would like to come back uh, to greet us once again before we turn it over to the pastor, uh, Reverend Sharita. Thank you so much. It's just a blessing once again to participate in this. And I want you to know that this is being broadcast from the great city of Swansea, South Carolina. <laughs> yes. Yes. This, this is where Hi, I am. Bishop. Hi, Supervisor. Hi. Bishop. And so I'm just blessed to be here. Thank you again for this opportunity to serve. And I present to you now the Bishop of the Ninth Episcopal District, Bishop Harry L. Seawright, the 133rd elected and consecrated Bishop, and my reason for being in Swansea. <laughs> <laughs> I am so glad she is here in Swanson with me. Praise the Lord. As we come now, we greet you. We are so happy to greet you. We're so excited about what we have heard. We have laughed. 
I have one of my cousins visiting me with me, uh, Mr. Evan Evan, and we sit there at the table and we have laughed. <laughs> uh, it's always good to hear Brother Red. It's always good to hear my wife, Reverend Rita. Uh, it's always good to laugh and thank you all so much to uh, Reverend Matty Evers and the Lee Chapel Church. Thank you for all of the technicians and everybody coming together. We're so grateful for everything we have heard and all that we have enjoyed. As has already been said, laughter is good medicine for the spirit. And we just praise the Lord that our spirits are happy as a result of what we have heard. And it couldn't have not come at a better time when you're experiencing bereavement. It's good to be able to laugh and see the bright side of life. Amen. Thank you, Bishop uh, C. Wright, for uh, those words of commendation. And we thank God uh, for you greeting us and supervisor. At this time, without further ado, we want to turn this part of the uh, comedy over to the pastor of Lee Chapel, none other than the Reverend Maddie Edwards. While we await for Reverend Edwards to come on, we do want to be prepared as she will give her the final remarks and commendations. We will follow up with the doxology and the missionary benediction to close out. We will have a little jazz music and if you would like to stay on to fellowship, we ask that you would following um, the remarks of Maddie Edwards. Reverend Maddie Edwards. Hey. Amen, God be the glory. Uh, the Lee Chapel Church family, we express our gratitude for you accepting our invitation to this Jazz and Community Fellowship, which gave us the opportunity to fellowship together and to laugh and to enjoy one another's company. Uh, we hope we have met your expectations. And at this time, the doctor already prayed for the missionary benediction, and we will remain on the line for fellowship. Okay. Before we recite the missionary benediction, we would like to thank all of you to, who participated and attended this tea. I want to give you a special thanks to our Episcopal supervisor. Rita, Reverend Sharita Moon Seawright, who has, has a busy schedule, stopped to exhale and to give us some of her precious time. And Red, who is our Northeast Male Missionary of the Year, I talked with him yesterday and he said, I sure do lie good. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> You lie well. <laughs> I see there's a note on the screen about the doxology. Do we want to do the doxology first and then the missionary? Yes, we will, we will conclude with the doxology and then the missionary benediction okay. at this time.
In the name of the triad God, may the spirit of Christian musicians enter into every heart. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.